I'm Stacey J. And I'm Chuck Duran. Welcome to an awesome new episode of VO Buzz Weekly. That's right. And on the show today, we have Kevin Shinnick, and he's here to teach you guys a bunch of stuff. We're going to learn some cool stuff, yeah? Yes, he's so fascinating, so versatile. Writer, director, producer, actor. He's awesome. So we're going to talk to him right now. Guys, our guest is an Emmy and Annie Award winning writer, director, producer, and actor. He is the creator of Mad the Animated Series and has written for Robot Chicken, EA Games, DC Comics, Lucasfilm Animation, on and on, blah, blah, blah. I love bragging about him. Get ready for an awesome buzz with the super talented Kevin Shinnick. Hello. Wow. How, I, my gosh, you should come with me everywhere yeah. I go. I was just going to say, you need something <laughs> like that. I was going to say, I can't get a table, like, you know. We'll Chuck get our C's. calendars yeah. coordinated. It's yeah. great to thank you nice so much for being here. Guys, we were like, yeah, just to think, before she talked, I had nothing, I didn't know anything about you. <laughs> now, now I know exactly now. You, you know, know everything. Those this are the is freaking awesome. I know, the, the shoes, the cute socks. Oh, Look at him, he's all like, let's show everybody the shoes and the socks real quick. Really? Okay, well, these are shoes and these are my socks. Right? Look at that. So cute. Thank you. Did you? Now, do you normally dress this nice? Cleaned or did, up did you his do act a little. I try, well, a little bit of both. A little bit of both. I try. I, I feel comfortable dressing nice. People people say to me, why are you dressed up today? I'm like, I don't know. I, I feel yeah. more comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to know. feel clean and yes. stylish. Yes, yeah. yes. I always... It's always funny at the robot chicken room because the uniform over there is a sweatshirt and, and t-shirt. And they're yeah. like, what, what, did someone die? What, are you going out after this? I was like, no, I just, I, this is what I like to I'm wear. I'm just a grown up. Well, there oh, you have it. There you have it. That's great, man. That's so cool. Well, we're going to get right down to it. I know you have some cool stories and we're yeah. going to get into yeah. those. But let's start in the beginning, man. You have a background. Uh, you performed on Broadway, acting on TV and film. Mm -hmm. um, so take us back to that. <laughs> oh, and, then how, and then how you found your way into All right. this wonderful for world of VO. We well, love details. Don't leave anything out. Uh oh, right. yeah. What kind of show is this? Go there, Barbara. Um, <laughs> well, my career has the focus of an eight-year-old, I think, because I've always followed the interest I had when I was that age, and, and as yeah. a result, it's like I'm turning my midlife crisis into a career. Uh, everything I nice. do. Midlife crisis at 22. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, <laughs> ish. Um, ish, exactly. You know, I, I went to school for theater. And, uh, and I studied that in college, and then I was very, very fortunate. And a year out of college, after graduating, I booked uh, my first Broadway show. And um, it, it's a story into itself because it was the seagull on Broadway. Yeah. Um, Tony Randall was producing it. But I, the cast was, okay, it, and I say this again, cause just because it blew <laughs> yeah. my mind, even then. Um, Ethan Hawke, Laura Linney, Tyne Daly, John Voight, uh, Tony Roberts, a couple others, and essentially myself. It was mm. like, it was as if I had like won an auction for a walk-on. <laughs> and my role wasn't much bigger than that, but it was kind of yeah. like I just wound up That's there, you know? amazing. And it, it became like graduate school. Mm -hmm. and, like and, that, man. And the wow. best story to come out of that was the fact that John Voight and I became very friendly. Um, and this is going back a ways. This is like early 90s, before mm. this person I will mention was even known to any of us, especially me. Mm. And one day, John and I were at rehearsal, and he said to me, you know, my daughter's coming to town this weekend. Would you, you want to take her to dinner? And I was like, what? Yeah, sure. Okay. So as a result, I've gone on a date with People Magazine's Sexiest Woman Alive, wow. Angelina Jolie. Get down. <laughs> so it was. Where did you go? It was, we went to some Russian restaurant oh, near the theater. Nice. And then John. Her and, pick or your pick? Uh, my or pick. <laughs> my pick. <laughs> okay. And then uh, John and Tyne Daly joined us for dessert. Afterwards. I was gonna say, did he chaperone? No, he you didn't had... chaperone. I had some time. Okay, you had, had two courses time. with her, and then Dad. Came. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Nice. Wow. Like, do you have a T-shirt or anything? Uh, you know, we have vials of each other's blood on. No, no, that was That's done. That's so romantic. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so funny. She was a sweet, wonderful person, uh, very much in her goth phase. Black mm -hmm. lipstick, yeah. straight right. hair, pale. And I was, you know, me. Hey! So I don't know if it was a match made. Yeah, like my know. eyes on? <laughs> exactly. And back then, you guys were 12? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. No, no, no. That's I said, hey, so you like my shoes and my socks? Yeah. And she's like, she I was love that. I <laughs> Got so it yeah, that was you know that that started my career, and I subsequently mm. did like six Broadway shows, and and uh, you know at some point I just started writing because as most actors do at some point they're like the jobs aren't coming as right. fast and furious as I'd like, and um, uh, kind of jumping around, I I, um, I did this one man show that I did off Broadway, and these Broadway producers that I knew came to um, to see the show. We went out to dinner to talk about doing it someplace else. And then completely out of left field, as we're getting up, we're putting our coats on, they say to me, hey, you, you don't know anything about Spider-Man, do you? And I was kind of like, 
Actually, actually, I do because I, I was a big Spider-Man. comic book geek, yeah, yeah, and this yeah. is even before it was, you know, yeah. the, the, the the thing to say. And they said, "Well, we have the world theatrical rights to do the first ever uh, feature length stage presentation." Basically, what Julie Taymor did, mm-hmm. yeah, I did about seven years earlier at Radio City Music Hall, and it toured the country stuff. And so that was my foray into writing. And then I moved out here, and I wrote some spec scripts. I got an agent, and then. Uh, I met with Seth Green at Robot mm-hmm. Chicken, and that became a fast friendship, and and kind of took off from there. You know, I started as a writer there and a voice actor, then I became creative director, and now I'm a co-executive producer on this latest uh, Robot yeah. Chicken DC comic mm-hmm. special. So cool, man! So you know, and then just jumping again, I, I left there to to create Mad. Yeah. And, but the, those guys are family, so I always keep yeah. one foot yeah, in the door. Yeah, yeah. Go back yeah. anytime. I always you want. do the specials and stuff. Yeah. Well, it's interesting if you could um, kind of take. You know, there's a lot of people watching. That, like you said, have one, two, three, <laughs> four. And four. Hi, mom. Right. Hi, dad. Exactly. Um, <laughs> that have aspirations to to whether it's be a voice actor, writer, director, but they have they're creating their own content. Right. Can you kind of take us through the process? Granted, each show is different, but what is the process if someone has created content? Mm-hmm. The pitch. How does how does something go from your brain, the paper, to being you know? I, I will say uh, two things. Well, I always lead by saying. Uh, my career, I always went with the door that opened. Mm-hmm. I didn't necess- I didn't set out to do all these things that I've done. In fact, this sounds cliche, but it's so true that it's not the the um, destination; it is the journey. Yeah. Because the things that I'm most proud of, I didn't see coming at all. It came out of left field, and I was right. like, "Oh, yeah, I can try that." And then you're like, "Oh my gosh, look yeah. what this brought me!" Yes. Um, yes. So I would say, stick with your passions, because. I'll always try anything. I'll always go with the door that opens. It doesn't mean you have to stay in that door. It doesn't mean you can't close that door. Um, ages ago, I hosted a show called Carmen San Diego. Um, yeah. And I had a yes. great time doing that show. It was perfect for me because it was just enough comedy and sci fi, and we were time traveling and, and all that stuff. But after that, I was getting tons of host jobs. And at that time, I was kind of like, I don't know if this is what I wanted to do, you know? Because I, I was still pursuing acting. But you yeah. had an action figure. I did. Seriously. <laughs> an action figure. That's true, that's it's true. Like my, I'm not available, but my action figure is available. <laughs> yes, I know. I've done that. I presented awards with my action figure, <laughs> I you love know? It. But, um, but the, the, and the thing about that is you, you have to take control of, of what you want. I remember mm-hmm. one time my agent called me ages ago and said, they want you for Extreme Gong. They were bringing back the gong <laughs> show. Gong. Extreme oh! gong. Yeah, not, yeah, extreme. And I was wow. literally driving to the audition when I thought, I can't do this. I can't do this. And I pulled over. I, and I called my agent and I said, no more. No, I can't do these. I, I, I have to focus on what I want to do because mm-hmm. I love doing Carmen San Diego, but these just didn't seem like I had my heart in it. Yeah. So getting back to your question, do what you like to do. You know, there are a lot of people who write or create things based on what they think other people will like or will mm-hmm. buy. And I find, and I'm not the first one to say this, that your own mind is your own genius and your and your flavor, and that's what people are looking for, not necessarily, you know, what Everybody they've seen. Else. Exactly. Yeah. And, and keep in mind, the world is also behind the curve. Yeah. Everybody will say they're not; they'll never buy that idea in, until they do. You yeah. know. Yeah. And then you're like, oh. And then of course they'll buy it. Right. Of course. Right. Anybody would. It's uh, a great idea. Yeah. Right. I wrote some. You know, when I first came out here ages ago, I went to to get an agent, and they said, "Well, what do you do?" I said, "Well, I'm an actor and a writer," and they said. Well, you can't do both. Are you an actor or a writer? And I was kind of like, I, I don't know. And now, you know, you have to do all of it. Yeah. You know, in order to survive. So, yeah. my for this point, my 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 advice is choose things you love to do because that'll show your flavor and you'll enjoy sticking with it as long as you can. Yeah, love it. I have a question for you. <laughs> yes, you in the back. <laughs> right here. Oh, yes. me, please. Pick mm-hmm. me. Um, so with your diverse background, you know, <laughs> yeah. writing, acting, and all this freaking stuff that you do, when you are, because you still audition for stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, I still, luckily, for some reason, I've acted more in the past three years than I have mm-hmm. my whole career. And I think it's because I have so much going on that I don't put pressure on. And, and that's exactly Ooh, why. I that's love exactly it's what I was going to ask you about. So because of I your diverse background, when you, watch <laughs> stuff, when you get an audition, whether it's voiceover or maybe even acting or whatever, what's your approach? I mean, what are you thinking when you're actually looking for whatever you're you know, going for? One thing I've learned 
And I, I really do believe that I would have had a better acting career if I didn't want it so much. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, other things kind of fell into place for me, the writing, the voiceover stuff, because I looked at it as a business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I didn't wake up each day going, okay, today's going to be the day. This is, I got to do it perfect. Because they're not looking for perfect. Again, like we said, they're looking for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, all I do is schedule it in my day and make sure that when I'm there, I am completely present for that audition. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. you know, I used to, when I learned this later on, it seems simple, but I found when I was going to auditions, be it voiceover or acting on camera or whatever, that I, I think I was going to make friends with the casting director. I don't think I was going to get the job. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I go in and be like, well, if I'm funny and charming, then she'll be like, let's always have him in. Yeah. And she might, but she's never going to cast me because yeah. the roles are not always funny and charming. Yeah. You know? And you're right, like, right. okay. And when I when I realized that, I started booking. And I thought, wow, yeah. it's mm -hmm. You know, and again, this seems simplistic, but it took me many years to figure this out. Yeah, yeah. You know, and when I'm in the room, I'm completely devoted to what I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. um, but the good thing is I don't spend too much time prior to that worrying about it because I'm usually on something else. Right. So, right. so when, in in regards to voiceover, mm -hmm. okay, whenever you do audition for any uh, stuff like that, is it normally just what animation or? Um, yeah, I did some video games, and animation is mostly what mostly. I've done. I used uh, ages ago. I did some radio commercials and things like that. But um, what really helps is being on the other side of it. You know, exactly yeah. creating Mad and working on Robot Chicken. I had a lot of people come into the booth, and I direct them. And even, you know, it, for on camera, I've done a lot of my own projects. And it's just so invaluable to realize, oh, that's what people see. Or that's what they're looking for, mm -hmm. you know. And it's just something that comes with experience. And I always say, if you're involved in this, in this business and you want to be, learn all aspects. Because right. it really yeah. does help. Yeah. It really yeah. does. What are some things that you, when you're on the other side of the glass, what are some things that are... Maybe some stumbles, some hurdles that, that voice actors that prevent them from possibly doing their best work or really getting their best work out there for Well, I think a key thing is to be comfortable because, you know, we want to feel comfortable. Wear sweats and t-shirts? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, in the VR business, you can. Yeah. Not that outfit. So, uh, that not this outfit, exactly. I like his outfit. Well, thank you. His but you can. You, it doesn't matter what, yeah. if you, especially if it's voiceover. Yeah. You can show up what in your What makes you bunny. comfortable? Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly, exactly. And you carry that with you. You know, when you walk in a room, I don't want to feel, oh, let's, let's hope this guy can do it. I want to know this guy's going to do it. And I've heard a million times ages ago where people would be like, casting director saying, we're on your side. We want you to get this job. Yeah. But until you're on that side, you think, oh, yeah, that is it. You know, and what helps, too, is realizing that you're, there, you're coming in and doing your job. And then you're leaving, whether it's an audition or whatever. Um, and to you, it's the most important 15 minutes of your life. Life to them, it's just part of the day. And that kind of took the pressure off for me. Yeah. You know, it was kind of like, all right, now come in. The next guy does that. Mm -hmm. And then, so being comfortable and owning, owning the room, mm -hmm. I find mm -hmm. gave an air of confidence. And I thought, oh, I want to hire this person. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because you felt secure in their ability. I did. Yeah. I yeah. totally did. I, you feel, and you know it when you feel it, you feel secure. Yeah. You feel mm -hmm. taken care of. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not worried like, all right, I'll cast this person. Let's hope it goes well. You you just, right. It's your butt, really. Yeah, it's it like, is. Yeah, yeah it you're is. putting yourself on the line there, too. Um, now, when it, okay, as a writer, we're switching your hats. All right. Fix your hair, Kevin. <laughs> uh, but the whole idea, especially in animation, about ad-libbing. Now, if you've written that script right. and you are either hearing the auditions or you're in the situation you're bringing some people in for callbacks, how open, how offended are you as a writer to when people take some liberties? Right. I'm open to it. Mm -hmm. As the director or the producer, I make sure you give me what I want, but I always do a take where it's like, give me, give me what I didn't write. Yeah. Because a lot of times that's the, that's the gem, you know? Right. You're like, that's hilarious. Why didn't I think about that? Or that's so much better, mm -hmm. you know? So I have no problem. I don't have an ego when it comes to like, but you, you have to. Now in animation, a lot of times you're stuck with that read because animation takes, not in Mad's case, but in the average case, it takes like a year, as you, you guys probably know. Right. Yeah. So they're already animating to something that you wrote maybe a year ago. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you need them to read it exactly as they do. Um, but if it's early on in the process, or even not, 
I'll always say, read it, I'll give notes, and then I'll always end up with, all right, third take, fourth take, give me whatever you want. Because mm -hmm. that's where the surprises are. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Very cool. Um, if the actor comes up with some really great lines, do you, they get reimbursed for that? Absolutely not. They get no, extra I'll steal residuals? it. I'll steal from the best. <laughs> so the writers will steal from you. So yes. You better make it good. But you know what? I'll probably bring you in again. Oh! So, so there you yeah. The juice is worth the squeeze. <laughs> exactly. You drive a Very hard cool. bargain. Right, yeah. right. No, but, that's, but that's good. And people yeah. should think about that because, I mean, I always tell. Well, because I'm sorry, can I, just on that thought, what does that say to you? If someone comes in and they've done some ad libs that are memorable, what does that say to you that you would want to bring them again? What what have, what imprint have they left for you? Well, it shows me that a the as long as they can do what I asked, mm -hmm. but then it's the icing on the cake. You know what I mean? It's right. like once you do what was asked of you, then when you bring something in your own, it's like this this is fantastic. I was so blessed to work with all the names you've probably had on the show: yeah. Tara Strong and Gray Delisle and. You know, uh, Stephen Stanton, Jim Meskimen, Chris Cox, so many great people. Billy West, Bill <laughs> Rob Paulson, Fred Tattashore, Charlie Adler. We can go on all. The, we can have a show just where <laughs> yes. we, we yeah. scroll we them up. We should do a one. Yeah, we, we should do a video of those weekly Wait, episodes. Just get your of phone, Kevin. Talent. We're you gonna should. we're gonna go you through should. Kevin's phone and just oh, look at once, his contacts. Once I mentioned one, I know I couldn't not mention I know, the other. So we're gonna be like, you didn't say my name. You didn't say my name, man. Oh, great, I'm great. But I'm sure I've missed many, so don't hold it against me. Just bring some cookies to the. <laughs> exactly. But what happened is I started to um, create my own little team, mm -hmm. you know, because they're they're my pinch hitters. They're I'm, they're reliable, and I right. know. Let's do it. Another thing. This seems a little offshoot, but it works with what we're talking about. People throw out. Oh, it's who you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're not wrong. But what they don't take into consideration is how long it took to get to know all these people. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because working, being in this business and working as hard as we all do mm -hmm. is what gets us to know each other and to get a reputation. Yeah. So yes, it is who you know, but mm -hmm. you're missing the first half. You right. know, is how difficult right. that journey is to right. know exactly. everybody. Which is a good reminder too that it is a tight knit community that you have to take care of that. You do because you don't want to be known for exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. You know, and it's it's a it's a it's a fine line because I've gotten jobs because I was funny and ad libbed in between lines, mm -hmm. but I've also seen people who get too showy in between. It's kind of like, okay, Stop you know, we've talking. got we've only have a certain amount of time. Yeah. Stop giving me your whole resume of character. You right. know, so it is a fine balance. Yeah, now, I'm not saying don't do that. I'm just saying read the room, exactly. know your audience. Yeah. Yeah, yes. exactly. And not only that, like, I, you know, so many people say that, you know, when you're really talented, you could do one thing and have people go like, whoa, this guy's insane. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? So you don't really yeah. have to go through, like, your entire repertoire right. of exactly. what you can do for people to know right. that you're really great. Yeah. So yeah. feel it's the true. room, be professional, show off a little bit, but leave not too some, much. Leave some mystery. You gotta be cool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like a date. Yeah, you know? exactly. There you go. Yeah. You know, leave a little mystery, give them exactly. what they want. Exactly. Make them, make them wait. <laughs> I love it. Play hard to get. <laughs> Okay, so give us a scoop on how Mad, the animated mm -hmm. yeah. series, came. it's so awesome. It's fourth season, right? Yeah, it, it has now completed, sadly, okay. but we went over 100 episodes. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's and, cool. Yeah, it was, it was so such great. a great ride. It really so was. So great. You know, I was over at Robot Chicken. I was working there, and the timing was just right. Um, Mad TV had wrapped up the live action show, and I think the rights became available again to Warner Brothers. And I think Adult Swim also wanted like a robot chicken but for like a prime time audience. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. we get to be a little blue on robot chicken. They said, let's see what we can do for like an eight o'clock crowd. And I was called in to interview for this job. And I I just loved Mad Magazine, you know, yeah. and it was like in my blood. So I just went in and, and I think I started singing a song that was on that floppy disc that came with <laughs> the magazine. Or and they were like, you know that song? And it kind of just, yeah. you know clinch the deal. Yeah. Uh, so I went over there and what's amazing, <clears throat> excuse me, is nobody thought this could be done because legally with parodies and the speed at which we wanted to do it to make yeah. topical, everything like, yeah, good luck, you know. Mm -hmm. And it was almost like teaching all divisions, you know, the legal division and the production division that we can do this. And it's only because everybody on my team put in like 200%, yeah. mm -hmm. and we all did double duty. Um, I was so blessed to have people from the magazine, Sergio Aragones, who always drew the little in the, in the margins, mm -hmm. you know, of the magazine. 
drew for us and we animated his work mm -hmm. you know um, all the you know the people Tom Richmond who draws the caricatures now he would come and do donate his work and mm -hmm. and we would make that come to life so it really felt like we were blessed by the actual Mad Magazine yeah. people and I worked very hand in hand with John Vaccara and people like that over at the magazine, mm -hmm. the editors and stuff. So it, it all felt part of the family. That's what so was cool. the time frame to produce each episode and get everything start to finish? What's amazing is I didn't write scripts, I wrote sketches. Right. And I had two or three writers under me at any given time. Mm -hmm. And I would have them just brainstorm ideas. And I would come in and say, yes, no, there's something in there, keep working on that. And then I'd have them write the first draft and I would either write subsequent drafts and when I put them together, I would sit with the editor and say, I know every episode needs a movie parody, TV parody, commercial, blah, 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 blah. And I would just pick from the well that we were doing. Mm -hmm. The longest parody, longest part of the show is the movie parody, and that was done in like two months. Mm -hmm. So I could write something today and in two months have it on the air. Uh, which, again, is amazing in animation yeah. world yeah, because usually yeah. it takes a year. And one of the reasons we were able to do that is because we all our, our workers were in the United States, mm -hmm. Canada in some cases, but I had an in-house staff of 15 animators. We had people in New York and whatever. So we were just, you know, breaking our back to make this stuff funny and to make mm -hmm. it fast. So cool. So it, was, it was great and such a unique thing. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. Yeah, and um, I mean it was and it was so topical. I mean So topical because again, two months to write it, okay? Mm -hmm. And then I would even leave a segment which we did like the news announcer, yeah. um, which I would write two weeks before it aired. Mm -hmm. So we can say, you know, we interrupt this program with some breaking news and you know, Kevin Shinnick was on, you know, VO Buzz and then and you're <laughs> like, Well, you know, uh, that just happened. Yeah, you know? so yeah, it was yeah. kinda yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. kinda fun doing that. That's cool. So what is it for you, you know, when you get to do, when you get to act in some of the projects that you're writing and directing? It's great because, and I've learned this, that, and I think we, this cross the board, whether you're acting, writing, or whatever, especially writing, so much of this business relies on communication mm -hmm. and being clear and getting you to know exactly what I'm thinking up here. Mm -hmm. And that's more difficult than you'd think. Yep. Especially with my mind. But, um, I would bet. <laughs> You're but, a little eight year old mind. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but the great thing about um, acting and some of the stuff that I was writing or directing is I think that's just one less person that I have to translate it mm -hmm. for, you know? And that's when I start getting a team of people who then get what I'm doing and they know, oh, he means this, or, you know, it, it becomes a, you know, a first hand experience for them. Yeah. Um, but, I don't know, I think uh, there's so much enjoyment in it. But, but to be able to type something and know exactly how you want to, to do it and then just go doing it. You know, yeah. I've had other jobs and they're all great. But, you know, if you're just one role, you do it and, and then it goes. And then you hope that your words were taken the way you meant, that the read was the way you want. Yeah. We created uh, the role of creative director at Robot Chicken that I had because we'd sit in the room and write the sketches and we'd send them on their way. And then we'd watch it and go, that, that wasn't, that didn't look, what, what, that wasn't what we, so the creative director kind of went along to all the process. We would mm -hmm. go to the puppet department. This is what I was thinking he'd look like, the costume department, the, we talked with the director yeah. to make sure that the theme that we were talking about in the room carried on to the final product. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, so in answer to your question, I think that's, other than the enjoyment of having your hands all over this whatever right, project right. is, it kind of makes it easier to communicate. Cool. Well, and then you also got to go into areas that you had not yeah, been in. Yeah, absolutely. And everything is, like I said, learn as many, mm -hmm. you know, facets of this business as you can. Yeah. And, um, you know, Robot Chicken has a, a program where they're, like a summer program where they'll teach stop motion animation, you know, yeah. and it's just, it's just a great place to, to be. Yeah, that's yeah. really cool, man. How many actors uh, worked on, on the Mad Show? Oh, gosh, I don't even, I mean. Around. Ballpark. You mean just voiceover actors? Yeah. Well, once I started finding my team, I started, you know, doing that. But I'd say at least 50 to 100. Wow, so you, you had know. like tons. Yeah, man. because mm -hmm. you, you're talking, we did over 2,000 sketches in yeah. four seasons. Yeah. Because every episode has like 12 to 15 sketches, and every one of those sketches has multiple roles. Yep. Right. You know, and you can only. SAG rules, you can only do three roles per, you know, so you just gotta mm -hmm. get as many people as you can. Wow. But yeah. 
That's cool, right? Yes. That's a big show, buddy. It was. <laughs> How many voices did you voice in that show? Oh, my God. <laughs> countless. I can't yeah. even. But you didn't get paid for that, right? You did it for free. Absolutely free. For it the love just, of it. For the love um, of my art. He's lying. He did it's it for, a the, liar. for the craft service. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> for the muffins they bring for while the you're up. Oh, those muffins. Oh, um, my goodness so, gracious. What what kind of con? I mean, you had said earlier that you know what's in your mind is is compelling content. But what do you think? Just kind of now with with the trends you're seeing in animation, what are the things you think are in demand? Are they the bluer stuff? Are they the family oriented? What are you thinking? You know, it's tough because my opinion doesn't always match what the business is going for. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest. Sometimes it's the only I'll... opinion we care about right now. So <laughs> well, just good. lay it right. out you don't there. Have we don't honest. care about You don't have the rest business. of the world in this chair. Exactly. Um, well, because I'll I'll drive down Sunset or whatever and see billboard of all these animated shows, which first of all is fantastic mm -hmm. because there's so much work for voiceover people nowadays because yeah. yeah. there's so much more animation than there used to be. Mm -hmm. But after a while, sometimes they all look a little similar. Mm -hmm. Something mm -hmm. works, and they try and duplicate it, and you know, and. You know, Robot Chicken, I have the time of my life on that show. When I moved to Mad, the parameters were a little different. And they were like, you can't curse, you can't do, you can't be blue, you can't. And in a way, it was great because it, it, it made me work my comedy chops. I kept thinking, I don't have to be a quick shot in the, in the, in the nuts. <laughs> you know, it's always yeah. going to be funny. Yeah. Or a bleeped right. word. It's always going to be funny. Yeah. But what, can I still make people laugh not doing all that? Mm -hmm. So I just went back to my roots of like, what do I find funny? Right, you know, and right. by the end we were joking. I, this show is for us, you know, yeah. which I also think is is key. Write for what you find funny. Again, if you write for what you think someone's gonna like, it's never gonna. It's no, never gonna no, go that yeah. Way. You to, yeah, yeah, you have to be genuine yeah. too. But I do love the trend that there's so much animation out mm -hmm. there now, yeah. you know, and all these great shows. And I would say just try and be distinct with what you what you want to do. Uh, you know, I think. Um, Company who who worked in Robot Chicken Shadow Machine have that show Bojack that yeah. looks that you know that's mm -hmm. completely different you know yeah. so yep. there are things you're like all right well what's what's something that I you know obviously you want to repeat some success mm -hmm. but what puts me out there what's going to be my cool, flavor man. who are some of your mentors I mean you must have some I really do um, <laughs> I really don't I really don't <laughs> no. that would have been really it's funny. all up to, uh, all thanks to me I'm, yeah no. thanks to me um, I have to say Tony Randall. As I said before, yeah. put me in my first Broadway show, but he gave me something that was so invaluable, and that was confidence. Mm. At and again, it was my first gig out of college, and I get in the show, and not only did he become, uh, you know, a mentor to me, he became a friend, mm -hmm. and he became a fan of my work, and just to hear him say, "You've got it," just do something with it, you know, you're on the right path. Yeah. Yeah, that's saved amazing. me. You know, it gave me the confidence to be like, okay, if if no one else thinks that, Tony Randall thinks that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it yeah. was it it just meant so much to me, and really carried a lot of weight and carried me forward in in many many ways. Um, you know, I have many mentors that aren't celebrities. You know, I had a professor in college, uh, Professor Mason, uh, who has since passed away, and he was such a unique individual. And he again taught me not just the craft of acting, but the craft of being who you are in life and just, yeah. you know, I felt he was a little bit higher than the rest of us. He had mm -hmm. a little more etiquette than the rest of us. He was a little more demanding, you know. This this doesn't even translate to what I'm talking about other than we would go to dinner and the waiter, you know, the waiter comes when you're done and takes the plate away. Right. He, re he hated that <laughs> and I have since adopted that because I think it is rude if you and I are eating and I'm done. And yeah, then you and take they my take, plate, mm -hmm. all of a sudden you're kind of like, oh, I guess I could speed up here. So all my friends laugh at me because <laughs> every time, I, 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 about eight times, I'll say, no, no, I'm going to wait till, till he's done. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to. Because everybody in the restaurant is primed to, they see her yeah. to mm -hmm. take it. And I have to say it at least four times in the same restaurant. No, I'm going to wait till he's done. We should done. try that. I'm going to lick my plate. You yeah. should. Um, I'm still yeah. working on it. No, but that's uh, true. <laughs> so there's that's nothing true. in so your So now plate. do you wait, do you not start eating until everyone has their plate? I usually do that too, yeah. Okay. Yeah, if I can. Okay. Let's go to dinner. If we'll find can. out. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes you're really well, sometimes hungry. Sometimes I say. Sometimes you're really hungry. Yeah. Sometimes sometimes you don't really like the well, people. No. Well, you can't do that at a sushi bar. Because <laughs> no, sometimes no. if you bring no. it out, you're like, all right. And you all right. might not get yours for another three or four plates down the line, man. <laughs> it's true. You're it's like gnawing true. on the edamame. So you're not going to wait. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, and if it's a hot dish, you know, you could say you start so it doesn't get yeah. cold. Right, you know. right, right, right. <laughs> 
Look how um, far off the track we've gotten. I know, right? <laughs> so life lessons. These are, the, these are these life are, lessons. It all. Yeah, and these are pearls, man. Yeah. These are pearls. Uh, you were you were you were saying earlier about like you know when you weren't acting, you were writing, and mm -hmm. and so whenever you weren't doing something, you were doing something else, which is really cool. So you're using your time to its fullest. Um, so uh, it's not really a question, but. Have you always been like that? Is that because a lot of actors are like, oh man, nothing's happening, and they're like, they do nothing. No, I think I've always been like that. I, I mean, maybe it came out of fear, but yeah. I, I don't know why, but it was, you'll never hear me say I'm bored because mm -hmm. I've got so many things that I want to do. And, you know, my feeling is, you know, if, if, if not everybody knows me, my job's not done, yeah. you know? Or if, if my work is not out there in every medium or form that mm -hmm. I want it to be, yeah. I'm not done. Okay, yeah. and you know yeah. I have a I have a, a daughter now, so life does impose on you, and you're like, and How I, I want she's four and a half. Wow, and, okay, and cool, she's man. fantastic, That's cool. yeah. and I just love every moment Great. I spend with her, which you know I want to spend my time with her, so I want to you know I work twice as hard during the hours that I I don't have her, so I can get it done and stay on top of my career as well. So she's over the no stage, and now she's at the why stage. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. That's true. The You're questions. Right. The yeah, questions. Exactly. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Exactly. Why? 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 I said so. Um, <laughs> the other day I said she said, "Can I have a cupcake or something before breakfast?" I said, "No, honey." I said, "That's." She said, "Why?" I said, "Because it's too much sugar in the morning." And she said, "She's four and a half." She said to me. I think that's a matter of opinion. Uh, she did not. She did. And I thought, you got a point, but you know what? It's my it's opinion, opinion that matters. So, that. until you're 18. Oh my God. That is hysterical. Uh, a precocious now, little girl. I, I like yes. it. If I were in that situation, I would be like, you just earned yourself that cup. <laughs> I know. Here you I go. Know. Sadly, she has me wrapped around her finger, but I try and hold off as best I can. I love it. Well, that's all we have for part one with Kevin Shinnick, but we will be back next week with part two. Yes, we will. And keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We love you guys. Thanks so much for watching. And just remember, you, you always, always have, have time, time for a little buzz. buzz.